Operation Hope, America's first nonprofit financial services network for the poor, the struggling class, the teetering class, folks with too much month at the end of their money, folks like you and me. Um, and uh, I am here to talk to you about um, a special topic, learning how to rise. I'm also CEO of Brian Group Ventures, uh, author of several books, including How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, and something I'm going to talk about today, tonight, Love Leadership. Um, I've had an interesting week. Hey, I see you guys signing on, um, and thanks for giving me part of your Friday night. Uh, I promise I won't abuse it. I'm going to honor it. Uh, hey, Sheila, Sheila, hello there. Hello, Lester Gardner, who used to work with me, uh, and now is doing his own thing. Hello, Brandon Love. How you doing? Terrence Sanders, hey King back, Hope Gap, uh, that's uh, Janae Roscoe, my government relations chief, Jermaine Mills, don't I sleep? <laughs> that's a good question. Lewis Matthew, uh, I just got back from LA and San Francisco. James Hambrick, Palm Spring, California, hello. Ferris Oliver, hello. Robert Stanley, my cousin. Thomas um, uh, Nabane, uh, Christopher Edmund. Okay, let's jump into this. Um, this has been a challenging week. Um, I have um, been defined by really how I manage pain. Um, success is easy, you know. Um, making it is easy. Going on vacation is easy. Um, buying nice things is easy. Um, being successful, if you want to call it that, is easy. Probably was better to see me standing up. Um, managing pain is the key to life. Uh, here's my question to you, and here's from my book, Love Leadership. Can you manage pain? The pain that you create for yourself and the pain visited upon you by others. Because life is 10% what life does to you, and 90% how you choose to respond to it. What's your response going to be is the question. And so I said in Love Leadership that, uh, that really... Courage is nothing more than your faith reaching through your fear, displaying itself as action in your life. I'm going to repeat. Courage is nothing more than your faith, uh, Rashonda, Rashonda, I think, said yes. Uh, your faith reaching through your fear, displaying itself as action, hello, Yolanda, in your life. Faith is nothing, the courage is nothing more, write this down, than your faith reaching through your fear, displaying itself as action in your life. I put a video on my page because from when I was in... Uh, L.A. this week. I was homeless in the, the video you saw, the picture that I put in there, the video uh, caption. I was homeless for six months of my life in that parking lot. I lived in my Jeep in that parking lot. And, you know, the same day, later in the day, um, I did a video called Thankful. Uh, I signed a uh, deal, which I can't talk about right now, that is probably one of the largest deals I'll, I've ever done um, that hopefully will create jobs and economic opportunity in our communities um, and uh, I'll get to that later when I can talk about it. But in the midst of all that, I had these sort of crushing disappointments, um, mostly of human decency, just people that, and I'm sure you can relate to this, people I love, I care for, um, who I think I treated well, you know, uh, who didn't treat me the same in return, in my opinion. Um, let's say I paid them to do a job, and um, they didn't do the job. Um, let's say I mentored them and nurtured them. They didn't really appreciate that. Let's say that um, um, I was always treating them like my family. Um, and then ultimately I was treated like a stranger, in my opinion. Um, and uh, ultimately I asked them to, and these are like three or four different people, it's not one person, in the same week. And, and ultimately I asked them to do something for which they were paid to do, um, and they basically gave me attitude. And... And, it, and the, the incident itself didn't bother me. What crushed me emotionally for the moment, what hurt me, and I'm glad it hurt me because, it's, you know, it's like you, 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 those moments you realize, you underscore that you're human, and you can touch, you can feel, you can smell, you can, you know, the, 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 the beauty of life is right there in front of you, rainbows after storms, right? You cannot have a rainbow without a storm first. So, so Marshall says, I'm going through that right now, working with the in homeless, uh, working with the in, my in, home, in homeless mission, she says. And, and so I just sort of felt, you know, I'm, I'm not just a brand, right? I'm not just 
uh, the founder of Operation Hope, you know, I'm not the entrepreneur or whatever you want to call me. I'm, I'm a person. I'm a human being. Right? I, I breathe. I, you know, I, I, I bleed, right? But from some people, I'm just a symbol. Okay, fine. Uh, that just makes me more resilient. Over, around it, through it, you're going to have to get to it. So really, uh, I had to, you know, feel it, breathe it, express it uh, in a responsible way, acknowledge it, right, and, be, and have enough courage to understand that vulnerability is not weakness, it's strength, to really feel that and then let it go, right? Remember I told you you cannot be emotional for a living. I've already said that in this, in some, hey, Tiffany, um, I've said that, hey, hey Belford. I've said that in these videos, you cannot be emotional for a living. You've got to respond to life, not react to life. Repeat that to yourself. You've got to respond to life, not react to life. So what's the net result of what I went through when I was homeless and what I went through this week? It made me stronger. Let me tell you about a race of people that are stronger because of what they went through. African Americans. Um, we're not thriving as a race of people right now, but we've done an incredible job of surviving, which in the current environment is probably thriving. Here's what I mean. After 250 years of slavery and 100 years of Jim Crow ending in 1970, not 1870, 1970, or within the lifetime of most people watching this video, it is not crazy that 70% of black Americans might be clinically undiagnosed depressed. And before you feel ashamed about that or feel uncomfortable about that, you should actually be proud of that because anybody else, it would have crushed them. Anybody else who went through that as a race of people, it would have destroyed them um, because most people have never felt that kind of pain and so they can't, they haven't adapted to it. But black folks are so resilient. Uh, we're over, we're, our motto is over it, around it, through it. We're going to get to it. And... Uh, and so we have learned to be survivors, so you agree with me. We've learned to thrive. We've learned uh, that a cutoff notice is nothing but something to deal with. <laughs> We've learned that a no father at home is just, you know, unfortunately par for the course in many of our families, so the mother's got to be mother and father. Um, sometimes the father has to be mother and father. Uh, we've learned to get up early. Uh, and, and stay to work, work late because if you're black, you're born on probation in America, which means you got to be twice as smart, twice as resilient, twice as intelligent, twice as well-dressed, twice as prepared, which just makes you better as a person, makes you more competitive. Um, and so if you're a woman, you understand that you're not going to get the same pay. You understand you're not going to get the same credit. You understand you're going to be talked talk down to and treated as you're a trinket in a, lot of, uh, in a lot of employment situations. So that provide you to survive that and punch through it, uh, it'll just make you better. Just makes you more resilient. Um, if you are a minority group of any sort, um, and, a white, and, and you can be white female, and you're still dealing with what I'm talking about, uh, if you are uh, uh, not the majority in that group, you're going to be treated differently, and so you're going to just have to respond more aspirationally, with more courage, uh, with more faith, with more confidence, with more commitment, with more belief, with a different attitude about gratitude. And here's your definition of success. Success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Morris Taylor says, right. Hey, David. Hey, Surrett. Resilience. Yes, Surrett. I'll just repeat this. Success, write this down. This is your new definition of success. Success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Uh, new major, non-major, thank you much for caring for us as a people more than we care about ourselves. Um, thank you so much, Tiffany Teach. Um, success, I'm going to repeat this because it's so important. We talk so fast sometimes. Sometimes I talk to you so fast because I'm going through an airport, I'm dealing with something, and i got stuff to do tonight. I got, you know, but this was I thought was important to stop and have this conversation. I hadn't talked to you for a couple of days. Success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm, over it, around it, to it, I'm going to get to it. What am I saying? Stop expecting people to be nice to you. <laughs> Stop expecting the world to be fair. Here's a good plan for yourself. Hope for the best, expect the worst, and condition your mind for whatever happens. See, this is what we do at Operation Hope. We reintroduce you back to yourself. When you come into an Operation Hope office, it's not just about, it's not about your budget and your financial plan and your credit score and all that stuff. The first thing we want to do is introduce you, reintroduce you back to yourself, 
back to your greatness, back to your promise as God's child, to remind you uh, that uh, there's no one with your fingerprints anywhere in the world, to remind you that you are unique and special, and God only made one you. To, to, for, for you to re-accept your greatness uh, and that you have a place in this world. And that's why I wrote How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, even though it sounds strange as a topic, as a, as a title, when I tell you it is a material fact that with the exception of crime, government contracting, war, um, yeah, government contracting, war, and crime, uh, all money, all wealth came from poor people. That every big company was once a small one. That most of these big companies were created by immigrant entrepreneurs who could not get a job in the big towers. I mean, don't worry about people who are second generation money or third generation money. They got to work harder than you because they don't have the hustle. So what's that? It's a, it's a joke. It's really it's, it's serious. The first generation makes it. The second generation spends it. The third generation loses it. I wouldn't want to be anything in the world other than who I am for anything in the world. Uh, Chris Rock, who I think is just a prophet, I think the guy is just brilliant. Um, he's so, he just has a genius and he makes serious things funny. Chris Rock once said, I'm rich, I'm famous. Um, but nobody in here who's white would want to be me, who would want to take their, change their place with me. And that was funny, but he was serious and he might be correct because he knows that if you're black, you're catching heck. Uh, that Chris Rock could be pulled over just like anybody else and thrown against a, 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 a car because he fit some stereotype of somebody who just stole a stereo uh, and you couldn't be driving that car. It can't be your car. Um, I used to get that all the time. So whose car is this, sir? And so you just learn to step over mess, not in it. You learn to become more resilient. You learn to breathe through problems. Uh, you learn to not let people who are ignorant to get on your nerve. Uh, I just refuse to give ignorance any credit. I refuse to give ignorance any quarter. I refuse to, uh, to argue with a fool proves there are two. As Reverend Murray, Cecil Chip Murray of L.A. once told me, it's not what people call you. It's what you answer to that's important. And never answer out of your name. And then I said to argue with a fool proves there are two. So if you live in the United States of America, or you live in, even in South Africa and Africa, if you live in a developed country and you're watching this video feed on a Wi-Fi network or a strong uh, four or five um, bar cell phone, then you're blessed. You're living someplace in the world with modern technology. Yet we complain about our problems. I can complain about my week, but, but wait a minute, what am I complaining about? All of us are having, all of us who are watching this have a series of high class problems. Uh, Trudy says, amen. Uh, mm, this is good, Roshinda said. Uh, we all have a series of high-class problems. If you're breathing, if you're vertical, if you can go to a hospital with first-class uh, medical care, uh, if you're arguing right now with Congress about whether they're going to pay more or less of your medical care, if you've got food in their refrigerator, if you have a refrigerator, because most of the world doesn't have a refrigerator, if you have electricity, you can do this, and the lights actually come on, and you just argue about whether you can pay the bill because most of the world can't do this. Most of the world cannot turn electricity on and off like that. If you've got a credit card and you argue about how, you know, how much your balance is or what your interest rate is, if you have a car, car loan, you have a mortgage, you're paying rent somewhere, you are blessed. The rest of the world would just die to have your problems. But yet we complain about it. We, we, we don't recognize our blessings. We see the glass of life. Uh, uh, as half empty, not half full. And here's the first, the first rule of wealth. Whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're right. Whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, hey, Beverly Rice, uh, uh, thank you. I'm not going to repeat that because it sounds self-serving, but thank you for that comment, Beverly. Uh, whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're absolutely right. I'm going to repeat it. Whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're absolutely right. I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you if you're great if you're saying that you're an idiot. So that's why I said that the first rule of success for fighting poverty is recognizing that we've misdiagnosed poverty 
hey Tim Burke, who just signed, I love you, man. That that poverty is not about money. I know you find this hard to believe, particularly if you're struggling right now for money. I'm not disrespecting the fact that you need money. But what I am saying is if I give a homeless man a million dollars because I feel sorry for him and that's all I do to help him and that's all he does to help himself, I give a homeless man a million dollars, he'll be broke in six months. Did you hear that? Because nothing changed here and nothing changed here, which means nothing will change here. And the word capital comes from the Latin root word capitas. I cover this in my new book, The Memo, out in September, which is knowledge in the head. I repeat that. The capital comes from the Latin root word capitas, which means knowledge in the head. It has nothing to do with money. And the Bible, the, the Bible t breaks down uh, poverty and says in Proverbs, and, and poverty says, says to be poor is not to not have anything, to be poor is not to not do anything, and lazy hands make a man poor. This is the Bible now. It's interesting that we don't cover this definition of poverty. We stay with the convenient uh, uh, text that allow some of us to feel like a victim, which will get you nowhere, by the way. So I'm going to repeat this. Poverty in the Bible says to be poor is not to not have anything, to be poor is not to not do anything, and lazy hands make a man poor. That's why in the dictionary the word success comes, well, only in the dictionary does the word success come before the word work because Work comes first in life, but success is alphabetical in the dictionary. Only in the dictionary does the word success come before the word work because success in the word work is alphabetical in the dictionary. Every place else, the word work comes before the word success because love is work, non-love is laziness, and anti-love is evil. And so going back to what I say about Operation Hope and what I said 26 years ago when I founded this organization, that, that there's a difference between being broke and being poor. That being broke is economic, teach a man to fish, Alexis, exactly. To be broke is economic, the power of nine is not, mine is not a joke, Kiara. To be broke is economic, but to be poor is a disabling frame of mind, a depressed condition of your spirit, and you must vow never to be poor again. I'm going to repeat that. To be, it's my own quote now, to be, to, that, 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 that there's a difference between being broke and being poor. To be broke is economic, but to be poor is a disabling frame of mind, a depressed condition of your spirit, and you must vow never to be poor again. And, and then, as Reverend Murray would say, it's not what people call you, Reverend Cecil Chip Murray, my mentor who raised me in my adult life, it's not what people call you, it's what you answer to that's important, and never, ever, ever answer out of your name. And then I added to argue with a fool, proves there are two. So let's assume this week that somebody... Um, Call me an axe murderer. They didn't. I'm not an axe murderer, so why would I respond to that? Somebody called me a rapist. I'm not a rapist, so why would I respond to that? Somebody called me a nigger. Yeah, I said it. I'm not a nigger, so why would I respond to that? Somebody calls me a boy, a spick, a chump. Those are not my names either, so why would I respond to that? Somebody says, well, John um, is um, a slickster. Well, I'm not a slickster, so why would I respond to that? John is a fraud. Well, have you seen my tax returns? Have you seen my, my charity navigator rating? Have you... You know, a security clearance with the White House? No, we, we all know that that's a lie. Why would, uh, publicly, but I mean privately, I know that's not true. So why would I respond to that? Because when you respond to that, you give that stuff life. You actually give it sort of credit, credibility, but you're also using your own energy and loaning your energy to somebody who's trying to destroy you. Did you hear that? You're actually loaning your energy to somebody trying to destroy you, trying to demean you. So what I try to do is to be consciously oblivious to most things. I live my life consciously oblivious to most things because most things just aren't important to me. I want every moment of my life to be retained for my own use. Do you hear me what I'm saying? I want every moment of my life retained for my own use. Hey, Yolanda Frazier. Right, I choose to hand out food off highway exits instead of money. I love people so much I often put them before my own. Uh, but God never leave me nor forsaken me. Exactly. But you also have to understand charity starts at home. The flight attendant will tell you when the plane is going down, put the oxygen mask on your face first and then your child. Because if you can't save you, you can't save them. Charity starts at home. So I'm going to go back to what I was saying. The message here is you've got to be your own source of resiliency. This world will chew you up, beat you down. This world where you try to help somebody, they'll kick you in the teeth. We save our worst behavior for those we care the most about. Did you hear me what I'm saying here? We say we give the we save our worst behavior. Um, 
uh, somebody says that Rashinda said she reached out four months ago to Operation Hope, but nobody, she never heard from anybody. Okay, do me a, fa a favor, Rashinda. I apologize for that. Uh, type, go to uh, uh, email rachel.doff, R A C A R A C H A E L dot D O F F at operationhope.org. Please, everybody, don't flood her email addresses, my chief of staff. But send her an email, and she will get you to one of our counselors. You shouldn't have waited four months to tell me, by the way, that nobody called you back. We're a free service. We're not funded by the government overwhelmingly. We're not, you know, we're, we're just a nonprofit that I, that I created, and we're, we're increasingly busy. Sometimes we miss a mark, but please blame it, on, blame it charge it to our, our head, not our heart. Uh, if we miss a mark, we'll make it right. You see, I'm responding to you directly here on on Facebook Live. So, luckily, I don't get a lot of those uh, comments. We normally do it right. So that's all right. It wasn't off topic. That's okay. She said, I apologize that this is off topic. But you see, I acknowledge my vulnerability right there. I acknowledge that we're not perfect. So everybody knows you're not perfect. Why not just have much cop to it? Isn't that, isn't that easier? Is, isn't it, is our services in Indiana yet? Man, not yet, but we're coming. Isn't it easier? Just, uh, we just opened up another Hope Inside in, in, in Tennessee where people were there uh, last week. Isn't it easier just to cop the fact that with what everybody knows already, which is that you're not perfect, versus trying to be something you're not? Uh, and by the way, then flip that, then why do you defend something, or why do you defend a person that you are not? Somebody's calling you a, a name and then drawing you into a stupid argument. Uh, if, if somebody calls me, as I said earlier, a nigga, a boy, a spick, a chump, a fraud, a slickster, a whatever, I, I'm just not turning around. It's not my name. I, I reserve my energy for what's important to me so I can then channel my energy into what I want to do. It, it, I'd rather you respect me and learn to like me than like me and never respect me. The reality is if you try to get everybody to like you, nobody's going to like you. Most people are not going to like you anyway. They don't like somebody who is a, who, who, who's a, a floor mat. They don't like somebody who, who doesn't stand for anything. Keep in mind that all, I'm going to do a video just on this. Most of our leaders in the world were assassinated that we really love, from John F. Kennedy to, it's probably, let me start with the proper line, Jesus Christ, uh, Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Malcolm X, John F. Kennedy, I mean, uh, Robert Kennedy, a lot of people that we admire were taken out of this world because it was just too much truth. So, so, so you might as well do you, right? Just show up whole and complete and force the world to respect you uh, or, or deal with you whole. At the very least, you're not giving up on yourself. And you can still acknowledge your, when you screw up and not, that you can screw up and not be a screw up. When you have a disagreement with somebody, you can disagree without being disagreeable. I'm going to do a whole video on how to disagree without being disagreeable, how to deal with difficult people. If you want me to do that, let me know you want me to do that. I'm going to do a video on difficult people. Abraham Lincoln, that's right, David, assassinated. You know, we, I may need to put down a whole list of these leaders. And truth be told, uh, um, there were real threats on the life of Nelson Mandela, but they couldn't kill him. And this is from the ANC, not, um, uh, not the white Afrikaners, because, because he was, quote, negotiating with the devil, working to bring the whites in his government. Some people didn't like that. Rashinda says, thank you, appreciate you guys. Thank you for all you do. Uh, that's the young lady who had the, the, the issue. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Brian, I love your videos and would love to speak with you personally if I could, Mark Scott. Uh, please, uh, I, there's 23 million viewers on this uh, this series. Uh, uh, I, I, I've got stuff to do. I've got 35 companies to, to, to run. Uh, I have 150 projects and, a, and try to host 2,500 to 3,000 people with this annual meeting in a month. Please excuse me if I say I cannot do that right now. But you can come to the public forum that I'm hosting on April 12th. Uh, and you're a lot of friends. You're such a dedicated follower. You should help to organize the day on meeting. So you heard me, go, uh, Yolanda, reach out to uh, Omari Pearson or Kevin Boucher on my team. Uh, Kevin's in, Atlanta, in, in, in uh, L.A., uh, Omari Pearson's in um, Atlanta, and tell him I said you should try to help to organize the meeting. Um, uh, so you can come to the public forum. I'll be there in person. I'll bring some of my fancy uh, VIP friends and CEOs. I'm trying to bring Henry Ford III, but I'll bring some leaders, heroes, and sheroes to meet you in person. It's free. You, it's me. It's you. Uh, come by plane, boat, automobile, bus pass, Uber, ride share, whatever, walking, talking. If you get there, it's free, and I'll engage with you personally. Or just catch me in an airport somewhere near you. Back to the topic. Um, I'm basically saying that my week, which was extremely tough, and people think that, oh, this guy's life is perfect. No, it's not perfect. Even with all my successes, I just I still have crushing failures. I still have things that... that, that occasionally devastate my spirit, but still we rise. 
over the round and through it, we're going to get to it. And your resiliency is really your key to your success, right? So in many ways, black folks and minorities have gone through all these challenges. You really shouldn't be angry and resentful about what you've gone through. It's really God preparing you for greatness because those who have been in the lowest, uh, val the lowest uh, 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 crevices, the lowest valleys, can prepare themselves for the highest mountain. You cannot get to the highest mountain unless you've been to the lowest valleys. You cannot have a rainbow without a storm first. You scientifically cannot have a rainbow, boom, yes, without a storm first. And as I put in my book, Love Leadership, loss creates leaders. Loss creates leaders. Loss creates leaders. I'm not afraid of my pain. I embrace it. I'm not afraid of my problems. I love them. I'm not afraid to deal with difficult people. It makes me better. I'm not afraid to admit that I screwed up. It, it allows me to relax. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not afraid to admit that I, occasionally I'm insecure. That makes me human. And that allows me to relate to you in a way that you can see your own greatness and your own potential that is untapped too. Because if I can do it, you can do it too. And I think that the more vulnerable you are, the stronger you are seen to other people. And then life's about connection. I get in trouble sometimes because I'm obsessed with connection. Um, and people don't know how to take me. They, they, take, they assume I mean something I really don't. But I'm obsessed with connection. And, but I'm not going to stop being me. I love hugging people. I'm not going to stop hugging people. It drives my HR department crazy. But I've got to like, warn people I'm about to hug you. Uh, I don't mean anything by it. I just, I'm, 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 a, I'm in love with love. I love, uh, I love connection. And I love, uh, I love letting people know that I appreciate them. And sometimes like, it gets me in trouble because I will do things. I'll write checks to people I just met. Uh, and there's one guy who gave $500 to uh, uh, TGI Fridays. He might be even watching today. Just because uh, he said, look, you know, he was just saying, I'm, I'm working two jobs. I'm trying to be a good father. My wife in, uh, uh, in California, I'm two months behind on my child support. And I'm, I just want to be a good dad. But she's not letting me see my, see my, dad, my, my son. I'm just, you know, any suggestions you have. I just wrote him a check of 500 bucks and said, hey, here's, here's your two months of child support. And he just looked at me and says, what do you want? I said, I just want you to be a strong black man and a role model for others. Pay it forward. And that guy wrote a note to his, uh, his child. And I gave him also some um, European currency, some euros. And I said, you know, give this to your child and show them that, and tell them you're going to go to Europe with them one day. You're going to take them around the world. And he sent that to his child and sent me a note saying that, that, I, uh, that I'm your dad and I'm going to take you around the world and I want you to be proud of me and I'm proud of you and, uh, and paid his ex-wife or his wife uh, that child support so she could uh, uh, live her life and have dignity and respect for him. And, um, and he came into our operational offices and I think that we, that little act of kindness made him better, right? But he, could, you know, for, he couldn't even like, get through the process. Like, what do you want from me? We're such a cynical world these days. We're so hurt. We're, so, we're in so much pain that everything seems to be a gig. Everybody, we just, just assume that somebody's trying to set us up. And, and, and that, I need you to get over that. Not because somebody's not trying to set you up. <laughs> People actually might be trying to set you up. But I'll just end with this. Ambassador Young told me one day, I, I was advising, I've been uh, a president of Point T for three presidents, and Clinton, Bush, and Obama. And um, I was working with President Bush, and um, um, I, I, some things I can't say about that, but I was trying to get him to make financial literacy federal policy. And uh, he's a good man, uh, and he actually did more for Africa than anybody, any president before or since. I, know, I bet you didn't know that. And um, uh, I didn't agree with a lot of his policies, right? Bill Clinton's my favorite president, but I thought President Bush was a good man. He called me Johnny Boy. That's my nickname. I said, that's okay, Mr. President. Just never, just never forget the Johnny Bart. <laughs> okay? Um, and uh, uh, I said I wanted to make financial literacy federal policy. He said yes. And then the meetings to get that done took another 10 months. I figured it was just a photo op. It was just nothing. It, was, it wasn't serious. And we got to keep going to meetings and meetings and meetings. I wanted to give up. And I remember going to, to see Ambassador Young one day, who was Dr. King's civil rights, right arm of the civil rights movement and a living icon in the world. You don't know who he is. Look it up. Uh, and the closest thing we have to Nelson Mandela today, um, Sean Nelson says, uh, act, great act, act of kindness, thank you. Well, and you can pay it for it too. It doesn't have to be five hundred bucks, it can be two bucks. Um, I'm going to do a whole piece on loaning money to family, by the way. Don't do it. Give them a grant. Don't give them a, don't give them a loan because they won't pay it back and they'll be upset with you. So anyway, um, I was uh, meeting with President Bush and it wasn't going anywhere. And I went to see Ambassador Andrew Young 
And he said, so how the meeting's going? And I said, ah, it's probably a photo op. And he said, John, stop it. He said, be skeptical. Don't be cynical. Because once you're cynical, you've lost hope. And the most dangerous person in the world is a person with no hope. He said, John, this is not about you. It's not about whether you like President Bush or not. This is not about you. This is about your people. It's about who you are. You are their representative. You're in there negotiating on their behalf. And you need to get out of your own way and, and, re, and, be recall, and remember what you're there for. And he said, you, you need to remember that we didn't get all the civil rights bill out of the charismatic John F. Kennedy. We got a, the civil rights bill out of the guy that many called an interesting person. I was going to say something else. Uh, uh, President Johnson, who had interesting things to say about women, not good. About Jews, not good. Around blacks, not good. And if we had just focused on what he had to say about other people... We wouldn't, and we, and we just gave up on them. We wouldn't have got four civil rights bills. And so he said, John, you got to, and this was very key. He said, John, this is not about you. He said, I want you to forget about you. I want you to go back in there, and I want you to figure out how to make President Bush look like a hero. <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to set it up and let him pay it off. Make it his idea. Make him, figure out a way to make him look good. And, get, and back up, and don't be concerned about who gets the credit. So that's what I did. I went back in to negotiations, and I was in Davos, Switzerland. I flown to Davos, Switzerland to go to the World Economic Forum meeting in January of 2008, I believe it was. And we've been negotiating since April of 2007. And I got a call on my phone saying, uh, the president wants to see you. He wants to sign your civil rights, your civil rights executive order, making financial literacy federal policy. But you got to be here in two days. So I had to turn around, actually the next day, I had to fly to Switzerland, drop my bags, turn around, take a bus, a train, and two planes back to Washington, D.C., go in the Oval Office, sign, see him, find his executive order. Uh, you can put it up online if you want to see it, by the way. Type my name in, President Bush, you'll see the, some of the ceremony. Uh, and uh, and on, my, on the, the sheet, I'll tell you what kind of man he was, on the sheet, uh, even though I'd done all the work, it said that Charles Schwab, the billionaire who's now a friend of mine, would be chairman of the President's Council, first ever President's Council on Financial Literacy, even though this was our idea, even though that we dreamed it up, we did the work, we were in 4,000 schools, we taught a million kids our financial literacy, we pounded on the, the door until it opened, but they needed a guy, a real, a made dude to be the chairman of this thing, and they actually called me and said, you know, we hope you're okay with putting this guy uh, as chairman of the council. I said, cool, but my name wasn't anywhere. And I was like, as long as it got done. And President Bush said, no, he went and scratched it out. This is, I'm not sure, something the current president would do. Scratched it out and wrote in John Hope Bryant, vice chairman. He actually literally inserted my name and inserted a title which did not exist. Because I, I operated the right way because I wasn't concerned about the credit because I was concerned about doing what was right. He also did what was right too. So if you give me 30%, I'm going to give you 30% of me. You give me 50% of you, I'm going to give you 50% of me. If I can think you are racist, then you're going to meet me with, uh, with, with this uh, and with whatever. If I, if I give you 80% of me, I'm vulnerable, open, whatever, then you'll meet me and give me 80% of you. You'll be vulnerable and open too. And sometimes you can make people better people by showing them that you're a better person. Did you get that? So I think that, uh, uh, that President Bush and I had a good relationship because I gave him the benefit of the doubt. We didn't focus on what we disagreed on. We disagreed on a lot of things. We focused on what we agreed on, and we found out we also agreed on a lot of things. And, um, and I think you can learn a lot from people who are different from you. Um, and the only problem I have, the big problem I have with the current administration is that there's just a lack of civility. Um, we might even agree on some things, but I just won't, I cannot get, be down with somebody who's, who's, who has no civility. Who, I mean, here's my model for the world. I think that hopefully he's watching, some of his advisors are watching this video. Uh, talk without being offensive, listen without being defensive, and, and, and always leave even your adversary with their dignity. I'm going to repeat that. Talk without being offensive, listen without being defensive, and always leave even your adversary with their dignity. Because if you don't, they'll spend the rest of their life trying to make you miserable. Karma is real, people. Whatever goes around, comes around. And this is another reason why I don't want you to get upset with people. I don't want you to get angry. I don't want you to be sending bad energy to folks because that stuff comes back on you. I'm going to leave you with a, a little quote the Reverend Warnock of, of uh, Ebenezer Church uh, told me one day. If you want to get a little grace, you better show a little mercy. So mercy is when some rancid SOB 
desperately deserves a rear end kicking that they're not going to get <laughs> is when some real jerk desperately deserves to get their rear end whipped. So mercy is when somebody who desperately deserves a rear end whipping doesn't get it. And grace is when you and I get gifts that we don't deserve. So mercy is when, when a jerk doesn't get the whipping he does deserve. And grace is when you and I get the gifts and the loves we don't deserve. I'm sorry. So mercy is when a jerk doesn't get the, 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 the rear end whipping he does deserve. And grace is when you and I get the gifts and the loves and the luck that we don't deserve. See, did you get that? Whatever goes around, help me out here, comes around. Did you get it? If you want to treat, this goes, this is like back to the Bible. It's just treat people as you want to be treated. So there's some folks who got a few dollars from me this week. Okay. That's cool. I hope that, I hope that, I hope that holds you because that's it. <laughs> there's some folks who took advantage of me. Okay. Hope that felt good to you because that's it. Uh, there's some people who, you know, felt that they got the best of me this week. That's okay. I'm still John Hope Bryant and I'm still rolling in the world that I created. Uh, and my bed, my good days outnumber my bad. Uh, and I'm still God's child and I'm still living my dream. And I'll step over mess and not in it. And I'm going to love you into greatness. I'm going to love my enemy. I'm going to love people who try to jack me up because you know what? It takes seven muscles to smile and 35 muscles to frown. So even if you're wishing me evil, I'm going to wish you well because I know that whatever goes around comes around and you're going to get nothing but negative energy and nothing but bad luck and nothing but bad karma. You're not going to be a happy person. You're going to be miserable. And I don't, I don't want that stuff to jump on me. Andrew Young once told me that uh, you don't get mad at racists. He said racism is a sickness. You try to get them some help. Otherwise, it may jump on you and you might get sick too. And I guess that's my message to you uh, is uh, let's learn from our problems. Let's embrace them. Let's uh, treat them as the lessons that they are. Um, when somebody is being unkind to you and unloving to you, they don't hate you. They hate themselves. Did you hear that? Law of Attraction, Kiara Lopez. Uh, love those who desperately try to, dis to use you and despise you. Exactly. Uh, I um, love you. And I think you're going to change the world, each and every one of you. And that's why I invest this time and energy in you. And um, that's why I'll keep doing it. And you've got us to 23 million views and counting. And uh, we're going to take this all the way up to 100 million viewers and a half million followers on this page. Tell your friends, please, to follow this page. Uh, if everybody did what Yolanda did, that what does, but telling all her friends to follow, uh, we've already been at a half million view, uh, followers. We have, have 200,000 plus, I think it's 215, up from 800 a year ago. We had 800 likes a year ago. Now there's 215,000, which shows this is a movement. 23 million views on this page. Um, and... Uh, and I want 100 million views uh, this year, and I want uh, uh, half a million uh, likes. Please help us get there. Then I want to um, get this up to a million. Imagine if we could be a celebrity portal uh, or an entrepreneurship and philanthropic portal for civil rights, a new movement. And, uh, and as a non-entertainer, uh, that we could get this movement to a celebrity status where we made smart, sexy. Imagine if you and I could do that. Wouldn't that be cool? And when I'm walking down the street five years from now, a little kid says, not, hey, mommy, that's a politician, which is cool. Not, hey, mommy, that's an athlete, which is cool. Not, hey, mommy, that's a rap star, which is cool. Not, hey, mommy, that's a drug dealer, which is not cool. But, hey, mommy, that's an entrepreneur. That's a philanthropist. You know, he does well and does good. You know, uh, I want to be just like that. Boom. Now we've changed the world. Let's change our world by changing our mind. Let's solve poverty from the neck up. Let's be the change we want to see in the world. You don't know who's following you, who's looking at you, who's paying attention to you, who's, who, who, yes, truly love your enemy, who, who is looking for you for guidance of who they can be. And when you got people in Washington, D.C., in the White House who are acting like fools, like we are sometimes acting, it is a horrible role model for children. When you have people in all levels of government who don't seem to, to know what being an adult in the room is, is a whole, horrible role model for, for our young people. And then we wonder why the world seems to have come off the rails. People have lost their mind because we're modeling what we see. And we need to, each one of us, 
raise a new generation of seekers and build, builders and leaders who model a different thing. They model you. 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 All right. Uh, uh, man, you're awesome, Jermaine Mills. Back at you. So Derek, I love you, man. I need the word. I need this word bad. I was just going through it. Thanks. So Derek is a bad brother. That's the, the guy who, met, who found my wallet. Him and his, his, his friend uh, found my wallet and returned it to me with everything in it. Now he works part-time for me, and he's running his own business, has his own company. I'm very proud of you, Sederic. Okay, uh, uh, Tuffa, you're right. My, my God bless you. Thank you. So I'm going to answer a couple questions here. Um, see, there are a couple questions that people want me to answer live. Um, I, I like to love my foes. Uh, who is that? Um, Yukub, Yukub, if I said that properly. Uh, these comments are coming in pretty hot and heavy, so my apologies. Beverly, you are truly, ooh, this is really coming in fast. My apologies. I mean, it's great, but the comments are coming in faster than I can rotate. You're truly blessing in many, in every way. Thank you, Beverly Rice. All right, Wayne Craig, you have been my mentor. Thank you very much. I'm honored by that. I like doing uh, uh, e-mentoring here. You see, I respond personally. Tell your friends who follow this page. Tell your friends who watch these videos. Hey, Lewis Matthew. Tell your friends to go to the video archives, the library. My, men, uh, my mentor, Dwayne, David Boyd. Um, go back to the, the whole, I've done a whole library now. Imagine this whole library that you can tap for free. People charge money for this stuff. Um, and motivational speakers and all these people, they charge tens of thousands of dollars of what I'm giving you for free. Go back to this library and, and just put it on your schedule to watch a couple videos a week going through it now. So I needed this word. That's Roshinda. Um, uh, go back to that library, find whatever topic you're going through, whatever, whatever you're dealing with, whatever wisdom you're looking for to move your life, to pivot in another direction. I guarantee you there's some video, they even have a, a woman's series in there. Uh, Tina Purcell, I love your message. Thank you. I'm 64, Hilda, and I'm still learning. Thanks. That's Hilda. Thank you. David Boyd, you have been my mentor uh, to John. Uh, uh, so David's talking to somebody else about who, who's there. Uh, so it's a mentor to mentor. That's great. Uh, so, uh, I want to start something in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How do I start? I have offices, Adrian uh, Brown, in Pittsburgh. Go to operationhope.org or go on Facebook and type in the Hope Inside Network and find my Pennsylvania offices. Go see my people there and get involved. David Boy, you. I'm the mentor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lewis Matthew, this helped me tonight. Fantastic. T again, there's a whole series of these videos. I know you're, uh, you're just watching these things live as it goes, but, but remember, all these videos are going into an archive. There's a library that I'm building, and ultimately I'm going to put together into a master class network, and we're going to take this master class, call it the memo, and push it into all of our Hope Inside locations, this video series, and then we're going to organize this into a master class uh, that you can teach yourself if you become if you become an expert at what we're talking about here, and then you can help to transport this these lessons to um, and I just think there's a movement of common sense is all it is. But these lessons to the people you care about in your communities, we start changing our communities one block at a time, one kid at a time, one adult at a time, one family at a time. And then you don't have to worry about what, who the president is or who the mayor is or who the governor is. No, nobody has that much control over your life. So, again, go back to the video library on my page at Facebook, John O'Brien Live. Find the, video, the five or ten videos that you want for that week. And, and tag those for yourself, save them on your Facebook page, and then throughout the day, just give yourself, before you go to sleep, 30 minutes before you go to sleep, just watch that video, put yourself in the right mindset for the next day, for battle, for you to go out here with all these haters <laughs> who are trying to drag you down and say, I'm just not having it, I'm going to take my life back, I'm out, one love, unbought, unbossed, unbiased, coming to you straight and no chaser, this time from Atlanta, Georgia. This is a civil rights movement from the streets to the suites, civil rights in the streets, civil rights in the suites. This is about not race in the color line, but class and poverty. This is about solving poverty from the neck up, not the shoulders down. It's about you taking your life back and deciding you're going to do it right now. You're living in a moment in history. Hey, James Nelson, joining late. <laughs> uh, hey, Jennifer Mangon, always inspiration. Thanks for your volunteerism help for Operation Hope for all global forums. Uh, you're doing a great job. Take your life back right now. You're sitting in a moment in history right now. But history never feels historic when you're sitting in it. Sitting in it. it just feels like another day. What are you going to do? Because it's not going to be good. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. This is not some romance novel. This is not some TV show. This is life. 
and love is work, non-love is laziness, and anti love is evil. Most people are not evil. They're just lazy. <laughs> They're mentally lazy, physically lazy, financially lazy, spiritually lazy. They just don't want to do the work. They want you to do the work for them. And they are unhappy with their life. And that's why they're miserable, and that's why they're hating on you. Because if I don't like me, I'm not going to like you. If I don't feel good about me, I'm not going to feel good about you. If I don't respect me, don't expect me to respect you. If I don't love me, I don't have a clue how to love you. And you know, here's the big one. If I don't have a purpose in my life, I'll make your life a living hell. Boom. I'm out. <laughs>